this video, I'll be presenting to us a solution to a problem that borders on one degree of freedom system wherein we will be calculating some variables that are useful in the analysis of a vibrating system. And we're going to walk through this problem in which we are required to calculate the natural frequency, the critical damping coefficient, the damping ratio, the damped frequency, the damped period, and the logarithmic decrement. And to solve the problem, the first thing would be to derive the equations of motion for this system. As one would observe, this is a one degree of freedom system. If the mass is given any form of displacement, the spring that is underneath the mass would respond to that displacement. At the same time, because the string that is attaching the mass to the pulley is inextensible, the pulley may also respond to such displacements. And that will cause a stretch on the second spring that is attached to it, and that will make it to also be displaced by the same dimension. So because this is a one degree of freedom system, so we're likely going to get one equation of motion. And to get the equation of motion, we can use any suitable method, but for this case, I'm going to quickly determine the equation of motion using the Lagrange formulation. And to use the Lagrange formulation, one may need to first write out the Lagrange equation for ease of following through. And the Lagrange equation is given as thus, where T is the kinetic energy, V is the potential energy, and QI is the generalized force, for this case as a result of the damper that is present. We are going to quickly estimate this term T, V and Q. T being the kinetic energy is the kinetic energy due to the mass and also the pulley. So to get the total kinetic energy we are going to sum this up and that will be equal to half of the mass times the velocity square which is x dot square and plus half of the moment of inertia of the pulley i times theta dot square where theta is the angular displacement of the pulley per time. One can quickly tell that this angular velocity of the pulley is also related to linear velocity of the mass by simple relation theta dot is equal to x dot over r where arrow is the radius of the pulley to which the string is attached. So one can have the kinetic energy to be T is equal to half m x dot square plus half i x dot over r square. As a result, the kinetic energy when simplified can be written as half m plus i over r square into s dot square. And because we're given values, we're given the value of r in the system for the system to be 1, we're given the value of i, i to be 8, we're given the value of m. So we have that the kinetic energy T is equal to half into brackets. Um, we have M to be 20 plus I, which is 8, over 1 square. We know that big R is 1, or multiplying S dot square. And that will give us 14X dot square. Next, we may need to evaluate the potential energy. We have that V is equal to the sum of potential energy of all the springs in the system. And we have two springs. So we have that V is equal to half times K X square plus half times K2 X square. Whereas the first one is K1. So if we bring this into the plane equation, we'll get half into brackets k1 plus k2 all x squared. So we have that v is equal to half where k1 is 190,000 plus 160,000 newton meters. 
Let's not forget that the unit that is given here, 160, is in kilonewtons meter. That's why we have 190,000 and 160,000. So invariably, one will get that V is equal to 175,000 X squared. Generalized force is equal to differential of the generalized displacement of the, or the work done as a result of damping. Whereas work done as a result of damping is given as as shown such that if we have that Q is equal to the W dx that we quickly and easily take out the integral sign from this term and we'll be left with minus C x dot and we're given a value for of c to be 550 newton seconds meter one can quickly write out that q is equal to 550 newton seconds per newton seconds per meter or multiplied by s dot and negative sign let's not forget our language equation so we're going to work out all these terms one per time. Beginning from this, we have that times ddt and differential of dx dot into 14x dot square. We can further simplify this therefore to be if you differentiate 14x dot square with respect to dx, you would get uh, 14 times 2 multiply by s dot and, and this term is being differentiated by dt and this is equivalent to d dt times 28 x dot so if we differentiate 28 x dot with respect to to time we we'll get 28 times acceleration, which is 28 x dot dot. Let's not forget that the differential of velocity s dot is same thing as acceleration, so it's 28 x dot dot. And that is to say, the first term has correctly be estimated. Next, we are going to work out the second term, which is a uh, dt dx dt dx is same thing as d dx to be 14x dot square and because this is x dot square we do not have any term as x so this would stand as a constant therefore if you differentiate it to transfer to x we we'll get zero and finally the last term which is our potential energy differentiated with respect to generalized displacement so for the last term we have dv dx to be equal to d dx into considering that we've gotten our potential energy earlier to be 175,000 x square so if this is differentiated we would likely get 2 times 175,000 x which is equal to 350,000 multiplied by x. So having obtained different values for the different parts of the Lagrange equation, we will write out our equation of motion as follows. 28x dot dot. For the second term, we had zero, so plus zero. Then for the third term, we had 350,000 x. And this will be equal to what we got for the last term, that's qi, which is minus 550 x dots. If this is rearranged, we'll get um, 28 x dot dots plus 350,000 x plus 550 x dot 
to equal to zero. And of course, this is very similar to our generalized equation for a body undergoing vibration, which is written as ms dot dot plus just c equivalent s dot plus k equivalent x is equal to zero. So invariably, we can write out some of the variables that we've obtained. We have our equivalent mass to be 28 units. We have our equivalent damping coefficients to be 550 units. And we have our equivalent stiffness to be equal to 350,000 units. So having obtained value for mass, equivalent damping, as well as a value for equivalent spring stiffness, we we'll progress from here to begin to calculate some of the variables that we are to estimate. There are different approaches to this, but for this case, we're just going to use some simple formulas that has been established in the literature. For natural frequency, which is the first term we're asked to look for, natural frequency being the frequency at which the system will vibrate in the absence of an exciting force. Natural frequency is the square root of k equivalent divided by the mass, the equivalent mass, and this will be equal to square root of 350,000 divided by 28. And if that is estimated properly, one will get 101.80 hertz as a natural frequency. Then our damp critical damping coefficient CC is simply equal to 2 times mass times natural frequency, or one can say is equal to 2 times square root of mass times equivalent stiffness. But for this case, we are looking at equivalent mass and not just mass. So having this, we we'll get our answer to be 2 times natural frequency, which is 111.80 times our mass, which is 28. And this will be equal to 6260.8 Newton seconds per meter. Damping ratio is just the ratio of the actual damping C divided by the critical damping of the system. And for this case, we had our actual damping to be 550. So that would be so our damping ratio will be 550 divided by our critical damping coefficient, which is 6260.8. And the answer to that will be 0 0.0878. And the implication of this is that the system is underdamped. And it's underdamped because the value of the critical damping coefficient, which is 0 0.0878, is less than 1. The next item we want to estimate is the damped frequency. The damped frequency of the system, WD, is equal to WN, which is the natural frequency, multiplied by square root of 1 minus damping ratio squared. So that would be our natural frequency we've already obtained to be 111.80. So our damp natural frequency will be 111.80 multiplied by 1 minus our square of damping ratio, which is 0 0.878 or square, and the whole of this is square root, which is which means it's just to power half. And if we evaluate that, we'll get our damped frequency to be 110.93 Hz. That is to say, if the, the system will be vibrating at this frequency, since damping is present in the system. The next, we want to look for the damped period, which is TD. TD is just 2 pi over WD. That's 2 pi divided by the damped frequency. So we have 2 pi over 110.93 edge, and that will give us a period to be 0 0.5664 seconds. That means it will take the system 0 0.5664 seconds almost or a bit more than half of a second 
to complete one oscillation. The final term we want to estimate is the logarithmic decrement, which is equal to two pi, which is equal to two pi times damping ratio divided by square root of one minus damping ratio square, and that will be two pi multiplied by zero point zero eight. Zero point zero eight seven eight, all divided by one minus zero point zero eight seven eight squared, and if this is evaluated, we would get zero point five five three nine, and this is the ratio between successive amplitudes. That is to say, we have the system oscillating and the, the oscillation is dying with time. The ratio of this amplitude to this will be equal to our logarithmic decrement. Or the ratio of this second amplitude, which is the second one, to the third one, the ratio of them will give you a logarithmic decrement. So, so far, we estimated our natural frequency to be 111.80 Hz. Our critical damping coefficient to be 6 to 6, 0 0.8 newton seconds per meter. Our damping ratio to be 0 0.0878. Then we have our damped frequency, WD. We got that to be 110.93, which is very close to our natural frequency. And we had our damped period to be 0 0.05664 seconds and finally we had our logarithmic decrement to be 0 0.5539 these are all that were required to estimate for the system thank you for your time and thank you for watching